good evening students i'm starting with a very basic question which is generally coming nowadays so please start with the question please let me know when any one of you have done with the answer okay but 32 is supposed to be a very high number c to reach bulls eye a student has to take 100 steps he can take steps of 3 or 5 only how many different steps of 5 can he take if he must take at least one step of each type i suppose 32 22 and 17 the answers are incorrect now the equation can be in the form of 3 times x plus 5 times y happens to be equal to 100 steps in total i am audible now archit i am audible now okay so sorry let us explain it again we have 3 and 5 steps in total So 3x plus 5y happens to be equal to be 100 in this equation. If you create equation of this type, now x has to be a multiple of 5 and y has to be a multiple of 3, or we can write in the form of multiples of 3 and 5, or could we explain in the form like 3x plus 5y equals to 100. It is type of taking out integral solutions. No strictly, it's still yes, it's six. We're correct now. We can write it in the form of like five y is equals to hundred minus three y, or we can write it as y is equals to twenty minus three upon five into y. To to have the integral solutions for sorry, here it is x. To have the integral solutions for y, x has to be a multiple of five. So x can take values as five. 10 15 twenty 25 yes any other value which it can have can it have 30 yes can it have 35 no because at 35 why happens to be negative so in total we have can have this six values but we could even judge in the style that in any case the integral solution should be a multiple of 3 and 5 that means the lcm of 3 and 5 happens to be 15 so we need to find how 100 can be divided into this 15 multiples a multiples of 15 so it could be not, nothing but 100 by 15 The integral solution at max at max can be six. So this could be a shortcut for this question. I hope you understand this. If yes, let me show you another question of similar kind, and I would love to see that you guys are doing the same question in the same style. Ridhima, yes, I would explain it to you. I ask you that 3x plus 5y happens to be 100. I could even write 5y as 100 minus 3x, and y is equal to 20 minus 3 upon y x. For y to be integral, x has to be a multiple of 5. To multiple of 5, it comes should come into the table of 5, which is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and so on. But as we move on to 35, it becomes Minus 21, which gives y as a negative answer, which cannot happen. Yes, but the shortcut of this is because x and y are the inverse multiples. Y is a multiple of 3 and x is a multiple of 5. Then total, I want multiples of 3 and 5, which is an LCM of 15. So in 100, dividing having multiples of 15 in 100, it can be only 6. So integral solutions cannot be more than 6. Now is it okay with Ridhima? Okay. Now let us have the second question of similar kind, so that I could understand that you understand the concept. Please go with this question. Please go with this question. And please let me know when you are done. Okay. Archit also feels option three. And Idhima feels answer one. 
Congratulations to Ridima. Ridima is correct because the problem here is 2p plus 1.5q is equals to 60 can be rewritten as 2p plus 3 by 2q is equals to 60. With a similar concept, it can be written as 4 times p plus 3q equals to 120. So that means for integral solutions, it has to be a multiple of 4 and 3. That means the multiple of 12. So 120 will have 10 multiples for giving the 10 integral solutions. But here it is clearly mentioned we need positive integer solutions. Now when you did it 120 by 12, the answer which is coming to be 10, one of the solution in integral form is coming to be 0. But 0 is 0 a positive integer? I am asking a question. Is 0 a positive integer? Yes. 0 is not a positive integer. Is 0 a negative integer? No, I, no as well. Exactly. The 0 is neither positive nor negative. So we cannot include this integral solution. So solutions remains 10 minus 1 as equals to 9. So correct option becomes option number 1. I hope this is clear with everyone. So need to be taken care of while taking all these issues of multiple or integral solutions. What type of integral solution the questioner is asking from you? Is it positive, negative or it can be real or whatsoever? And accordingly need to calculate the answers. I hope this point is clear to everyone. I hope this point is clear to everyone. Could we start with the next question? Okay, please do this. Most of you have calculated the answers as correct, but let me explain you once. Now here it is given P, Q, R and the first P, Q, R is similar with the answer P, Q, R. That means for taking out this P, Q, R, Q times R, Q times Q, Q times P should generate the same results as P, Q, R, which could done only with the help of one at its place and S will take a place as 0. It is nothing but P, Q, R, S is P, 1, R, 0. Right. So this, the hint is from this first three letters of P, Q, R remaining the same. I hope this point is clear to everyone. And S could take only 0, otherwise the first three letters would change. Yes. That's really great. Let us start with the next question. Please go ahead. What is the number of zeros at the end of 150 factorial? I have answer from Redima. I have answer from Srishti. I am waiting for answers of Archit and Ankit. Yeah, do we have Archit? What about Ankit? Ankit, can we have the answers please from you? Or you are not able to solve this question? I think a busy working somewhere. But the simple logic here is the need to find number of zeros means you find the number of fives. So I simply need to know how many fives are included in 150 factorial. So how we find it? Dividing 150 by 5, getting answer as 30. Again, dividing this 30 by 5, getting answer as 6. Again, dividing 6 with 5, getting as 1, adding all these values and getting answer as 37. So, it's not 30, 37. Okay, you must be saying about 150 by 5. Okay. Is this clear? Okay. Ankit, answer is clear. I am not able to listen from Ankit. Let's move to the further slide.
what is the greatest power of 7 that will divide 100 factorial completely? Can we un have answers for this question? Nice. All of you have calculated correctly. So it is simply dividing 100 by 7, giving answer as 14, dividing 14 by 7, getting as 2 and adding it to 16. Nice. Let us move further. We solve this question of similar kind but in a different style. 5 stars to Srishti having a right answer. What about Archet and Ridhima? Are you still working out for the answer? Ridhima, yes, 40. What about Archet? It is nothing but again dividing 167 by 5. Getting answer as 33. 33 with 5. Getting as 6. 6 with 5. Getting as 1 and adding up to 40. With my afraid, no, we cannot calculate orally. We need to multiply the, for the value of y. Because 167 factorial is going to give you a huge number. So y becomes the rest of the numbers. But yes, if we want to divide into multiples of 2s, multiples of 3s, we can do that. But if we want a full value of y, that is not possible. But yes, in powers of 5, in powers of some prime factors, we can do it. Is that clear with Ritima? Can we have this question? Find the smallest number that should divide 198 factorial so that it becomes odd number. Sishti, I'm afraid the answer is incorrect. Can you recheck your answer? Archit, yes, I will explain this question. Let me have an answer from Shristi and Ridhima. What are they feeling like? Okay. This is one of the fantastic questions. Yes, Shristi, you got it correctly now. Yes, Ridhima, was, Ridhima it's not be 194. Yes, 2, 2 keep 194. No problems, Shishti. It always happens. Plus, please don't do this miscalculation mistake in the paper, which could be very heavy. Yes, for Archit. Now, this solution is for you. Now, 198 factorial could mean make odd when we remove all even numbers from this. Suppose we have 10 factorial and it is written as 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 to 5 into 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. To make this number as odd, I need to remove the 2's present in 2, in 4, in 6, in 8 and 10. That means only counting the number of 2's in 10 factorial. In similar sense, I need to remove number of 2's in 198 factorial, which we do as we count number of 5's also. We divide 198 with 2, we get answer as 99. When we divide 99 by 2, we get it as 49. When we divide 49 by 2, we get it as 24. Then 24 with 2, we get it as 12, 12 with 2, we get it as 6, 6 with 2, we get it as 3, 3 with 2, we get it as 1. Now we need to add these numbers as we find number of 5s for calculating number of zeros. In similar sense, we are counting number of 2s in 198 factorial. When we add all these values, it will end up to 194. So 2 keep our 9, 194. When 198 factorial will be divided by 2 key power 194, the resultant would be a odd number. Is this clear with Archit? Okay. Let us move to the next question. Please solve this question. Now we are starting with remainder questions. Let me see. How many of you can do this? Ridhima answer cannot be 52. When we divide number with 7, the remainder could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It cannot increase 7. Shishti is with the answer. Archit is with the answer. Ridhima is reworking on it. 
Oh, Nidhi, my question is not the last two digits. The question is the remainder problem. It's okay. Now we have Pratmesh also with us. Pratmesh, his take is for option number two. Most of us got it correctly. Yes, option is number one. The correct answer is option number one. How we can do it? With the help of cyclicity as well as with the help of Euler number. What is the Euler number of seven? Six. Yes. So what I need is two is raised to power eight four nine one. I need to divide this with seven and take out the remainder. Because the Euler number two and seven are co-prime and seven happens to be prime, the Euler number of seven is six. So we need to divide this power by six, which gives us as two keep us six whole power as one four one five into two by seven. Now this number can replace with the remainder, as we all know that the operation which is applied upon a number can also be applied upon its remainder. So I can replace the number. With its remainder, when I'm calculating the remainders, so two k plus six can be replaced with its remainder, which comes out to be one as per Euler theorem. K plus one for one five into two by seven. Now this is going to give me answer as one. I'm left with two by seven, and two by seven is going to give me the remainder as two. Is it clear with Prathmesh? Because he got the answer wrongly. Okay. Let us move further to the next slide of similar kind. Now, can we have answers from you guys? But please calculate it correctly because it needs some calculations to be done. Best of luck. Okay, Archit. I'll explain to you what about others. Are we done? But sorry, Ridhima, I'm afraid your answer is wrong. The correct answer is option number three. That is two. Let us see how. The question says seventeen raised to the power twenty-nine. Has to be divided by 11 to calculate the remainder. Now, because 17 and 11 happens to be the co-primes, and 11 happens to be prime, so I could apply the rule of Euler theorem. What is the Euler number of 11 in this case? Yes, of course, 10. So I could rewrite this as 17 part 10. To part two, with seventeen part nine by eleven. Now I could replace this seven ki part ten with its remainder, which happens to be one part two, seventeen by nine by eleven. Now seventeen, if divided by eleven, gives the remainder as six. The operation which is applied upon a number can also be applied upon its remainder. When 17 divided by 11 gives remainder as 6. Now I will divide this 6 in such a powers whose values I know. Means I could divide it as 6 ki part 3 with 3 and 11, which could be rewritten as 216 part 3 by 11 with a similar rule. With which I replace 17 with 6. Now I could replace 216 dividing by 11, getting remainder as 7 again to the part 3 dividing by 11, which gives me 7 ki part 3 by 11 as 343 by 11. And when I divide 343 by 11, the remainder obtained will be. Equals to two. Is this whole calculation clear to all of you?
Pratnesh is okay with it. Hidima says after 216 it's not clear. Hidima will see it again. Achit says explain 3 ki part 3. It's not 3 ki part 3. It's 6 ki part 3 ka whole bracket 3 because 3 into 3 makes 9. Shishti, we can always do this type of questions with cyclicity, but I would suggest you to not to do it by cyclicity because it could take some time. So I would say, I could explain you this method again and I would ask you to learn this method. So this could help you in coming times because the questions in num of number systems are becoming a little bit tough, tough day by day. So I would say, please learn this method. And if you don't get it, I would do it again for you. 17 part 29 by 11 replacing 29 in such a part so that it becomes in the form of Euler form it becomes 17 part 10 with 2 into 17 9 by 11 because adding up all these powers will result into 29 again and why it went to 10 because Euler number of 11 is and I know 17 part 10 by 11 is going to generate the remainder as 1. So, another operation is the num operation which is applied upon a number can also be applied upon its remainder. So, I could very well replace 17 key part 10 with the remainder of 17 key part 10 when divided by 11. And it's only done to calculate the remainders. So I could write, rewrite this as 1 part 2, 17 part 9 by 11. Now applying the same logic on 17 key part 9 as well. Where 17 when divided by 11 will generate a remainder of 6. Power has been not changed by 11. Now I'm dividing this power of 9, which is raised to power of 6, in the powers which whose values is very common to me like 6 key part 3 I could even do it shorter by 6 key part 2 as well but that will only increase the length of the solution nothing else so it becomes 216 part 3 by 11 with the same logic with which I replace 17 key part 9 by 6 I am replacing 216 with 7 as the remainder when 216 is divided by 11 and got it as 7 key part 3 by 11. Now I also know the value of 7 key part 3 which is 343 3 by 11 which will give me the overall remainder as 2. Now this is the method in which you can keep on shortenizing your numerator by replacing every time it with the remainder. What is the use of it is in any case the power happens to be with the great it is and number happens to be as much large as it is we need to only replace it every time with the remainder is this concept clear to all of you okay that's great please do this question for me now the matter which i told you could be applied very well in this question. The operation which is applied upon a number can also be applied upon its remainder. So I don't have to worry about this all powers given to me 11 part 12 part 13 part 14. The only thing which I need to do here is replace the 7 with the remainder of 6 which will be in any case 1. Now power happens to be anything overall remainder is always going to be 1. I hope all of you have got that and got your answers also correctly. Is this okay with Ridhima and Srishti? Srishti is with Pratnesh okay? Okay. Let us move further. Shashwat, is it okay? Fine. Let us move further. Can we have the answer for this question? Ridhima and Pratmesh, uh, I would suggest you please rethink upon your answer. 
Okay, two of you have got it correctly, but uh, Ridhima, Pratmesh, and Archit, I would suggest you to please go through your answers once again because I am afraid your answers are not correct. Okay, Pratmesh. Yes, here it is the concept of negative remainders. I hope you all of you know what is negative negative remainders. When I'm dividing 25 with 4, I could even say that the remainder happens to be 1. I could even say remainder happens to be minus 3. Now it's my take, I would replace it with the negative or with the positive. But overall answer will every time remains the positive. Because 1 and 3, the sum total of the absolute values of the negative and the positive remainders remains the divisor all the time. Okay. With a similar concept, when 5 raised to power 12, raised to power 13, raised to power 14, raised to power 15 has to be divided by 6. In this scenario, I'm replacing this 5 with a negative remainder of 5, which happens to be minus 1. Now, because minus 1 has raised to power 12, power 13, power 14, power 15, and 12 happens to be an even number. So, all this power is going to generate an even number. And minus 1 raised to power even always happens to be 1, and 1 when divided by 6 will generate a remainder of 1. Right. A similar question, but with different paths. Can we have answer for this question? Yes, we do have Driti also with us. Shashwat, your answer is not there, but Shishti, Ridhima, Archit, Pratmesh has got it correctly. Shashwat, no, it cannot be 8. Please rethink on your answer. Yes, Riti happens to be 5. The similar concept which we applied here in the last question, the only change is of this part. It was 12 ki power, 13 ki power, 14 ki power, 15, which now is 13 ki power, 14 ki power, 17 ki power, 21. Now, minus 1 is raised to power an odd power. So, overall remainder is going to be minus 1. But minus 1 cannot be an overall answer. So when 6 is generating a negative remainder of minus 1, it will generate a positive remainder of 5. Shashwat, it's clear? Okay. Let us move to the further questions. Can we have answer for this question? Okay, Ritima, I will explain this question to you. What about Archit? Okay. Archit also says to please explain this. Now, here is another concept. 2 is raised to power 6, 4, 3 divided by 96. Now, this 96 could be rewritten as 2, 6, 4, 3 by 2 raised to power 5 into 3. Now, can we cancel out this 2 raised to power 5 with 2 raised to power 6, 4, 3? Definitely yes. It could be written as 2, 6, 4, 3 minus 5 by 3. But please remember here, whenever we cancel out the common numbers from the numerators and the denominators while calculating the remainders, we need to multiply the same number with the final remainder to calculate, calculate the final remainder. I repeat, whenever we cancel out the common factor from numerator and denominator, we need to multiply this common factor with the remainder we obtain to get the final remainder. Please mind it, we are calculating remainders, we are not calculating the quotient, which is a common mistake a student does. So we are left with 2 raised to power 638 
by 3. Now, when I am replacing 2 with 3 with the negative remainder of minus 1, now power happens to be an even. So, the overall remainder which I will receive till here will be 1. But I need to multiply this with 1 with the same number with which I have cancelled in the above stage here. So, overall remainder will be 1 into 2k power 5 which happens to be 32. Please remember this. I am explaining it again that whenever you are cancelling out the common factor from the numerator and the denominator, we need to multiply that factor with the remainder you obtained to get the final remainder. Otherwise, the answer would be incorrect. Is this concept clear to all of you? Great. Can you please do this question for me? We have answers from Dhriti, but Dhriti, I suppose you should rethink on your answer. We have answer from Srishti, from Prathmesh, but you are waiting from Nidhima, Shashwat. Okay. Now here the question says, what is the last digit of 7 raised to power 11 raised to power 12 raised to power 13? So calculating the last digit of 7, the cyclicity of 7 is of 4 steps. That it will be 7, 9, 3, 1 at the end of the powers of 7. Now when I divide 7, when raised to power 7 raised to power 1, it gives 7. 7 raised to power 2 gives 9. 7 raised to power 3 gives 3. 4 gives 1 and so on. The cyclicity of 7 happens to be 1, happens to be 4. So I need to divide this 11 with 4. So it becomes to take out the remainders when 11 part 12 part 13 is divided by 4. Now with the same logic which you use in the last questions, I could replace 11 with the remainder when divided by 4 which could be minus 1 part 12 part 13 by 4 which could be minus 1 raised to power even number by 4 which gives you a remainder of 1. That means for this question 7 raised to power 1 remains at the last and 7 raised to power 1 has 7 at its units place. Is this okay? Shashwat, is it clear to you? Didima says yes. What about Sashwat? Is it clear to you? Okay. Let us move further. A question of similar kind. Yes, find the last digit of this question. Till now we have answer from Srishti. What about from others? Ishti says 0, Pratme says 0, Shashwat also says 0, Ridhima says 0, Driti as well, and each one of you is definitely correct, but the thing is, how many of you have calculated this in a lengthy method of calculating the last digit of each number of 1, of 2, of 3, of 4, of every one. And if you have done this, my dear friends, I am afraid you have done it very in a lengthy process. Exactly, Srishti, we don't have to calculate anything here because in one number we are having 2 and in one we are having 5. In any case, the last digit in all these cases is happens to be 0. Definitely Pratmesh, you're very correct. So let us move further of this same question of same style. Please do this question now. Nice, most of you got the answer correctly, but here again, Achit, okay. Here again, 
this is going to give you a odd last digit this is going to give you a odd last digit this is going to give you 5 at the last this has 1 as the last but i think i don't have to calculate all these numbers because we have 5 and all others are giving me odd at the end do we agree this and whenever 5 is multiplied with the odd number at the last the unit digit in any case has to be 5 every time the same logic of 2 into 5 could be applied with 5 into odd also so i need don't have to calculate the unit digits of all these numbers and if we do the resultant would be same as 5 so it will be merely a lengthy solution if we are doing that so please remember 5 into odd number is always going to generate you the 5 at the unit place <coughs> is this clear with you nice please solve this question i'm giving you some time to solve this question this is a little bit tricky so please do it correctly Shishti is with the answer, Ridhima is with the answer, Prathmesh is with the answer. What about Driti, Shashwat? Yes, Shashwat is there with the answer. Archet? Okay, Driti is there. Ridhima answer is 124, so we need to check it. It is very simple. We are given find the number of zeros at the end of the product of first 100 multiples of 10. The first 100 multiples of 10 will be 10 into 20 into 30 into dash 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 into 1000. Now if we take out 10 common we will have 100 tens in total and left with 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 up till 100 which is nothing but 10 per 100 with 100 factorial 100 is already there we need to know how many zeros are there in 100 factorial which is nothing but dividing 100 by 5 as we did it some time back so it's 20 20 by 5 giving 4 so we have 24 here 100 of this one gives 24 plus 100 in total as 124 Redima is it correct you got it wrongly Achit is it okay with you now Fine. As everybody got with the answer, let us move to the next question. Please solve this question. Diti needs to be explained. Diti, it's very simple. We need to have powers of 2 but all these numbers leaving this number of 1 will be having 2 so because this will be giving me an even number and this is an odd number and odd plus even is always going to give me an odd result and odd is never divisible by 2 so there will be no power of 2 dividing this so answer has to be a 0 if 1 was not there I need to have the minimum 1 from the 2 factorial because this will be having only 1 as 2 power so we need to see from only the lowest power because the highest will be including that as we look for 5 because if you see how many zeros we see for 5 we don't look for 2's because 2's are many in a similar sense if 1 is not there 
there will be only one power of 2 dividing it because in 2 factorial there is only 1 2 in 3 factorial it is 1 in 4 factorial it happens to be 3 but 2 factorial happens to be only having 1 2 so every time we need to for the lowest power is it okay find the everyone okay with the answer fine please solve this question Gunu was asked the number of boys in the class she said it is equal to a non composite number and if you double that number you get a prime number now if I double any number that number will always be a even number do you all agree with this because if we double any number we are multiplying in 2 and multiplying 2 with any number is always going to give me the answer as even so only non composite number which could satisfy this condition could be only 1 because 1 plus 1 is going to give me 2 which is a prime number and 1 happens to be a non composite please mind it it is non composite here not a prime number here so 1 is non composite as well as non prime and I hope all of you know that 1 is neither prime nor composite is this clear with Archit who has not answered the equation is it clear with Shashwat with Prathmesh as you have not answered this question and all of you able to get this concept that one is neither prime nor composite Pratmesh please check your connection because everything is well from my side Pratmesh is it okay Can we move further? Please solve this question. This is something very nice question I suppose. Please take some time, take some pain to solve this question. We have answer from Shishti, Pratmesh, Nidhima, Driti, Archit. Shashwat is with the answer. Okay, let us quickly see how to solve this question, but most of you got it correctly. Yes, answer is 36. Now mod of P plus mod of Q is has to be 9. We need to find the ordered pairs for P, Q, where P and Q has to be in integers. So, we could take P as 1, Q as 8, P as 2, QS7, PS3, QS4, sorry, QS6, PS4, QS5, and, and after that it will be only reverse. So we stop here. One could be plus plus, one could be plus minus, one could be minus plus, one could be minus minus. So we have 4 into 4, 16 solutions. But because it is the ordered pair, so it could be in the reverse order. First time this is P, this is Q. Second time this is P, this is Q. So it could be into 2. That is 32. But one solution can be 0, 9, plus minus 2 solutions. And 9 plus minus 0, 2 solutions. 2 here and 2 here. Total 4 solutions of this kind. Total 4 plus 32 makes 36 as the answer. Is this okay with you? Is this okay with everyone? Okay. There's another question for you. Okay. See, it's a very tricky question and otherwise very simple. 
it's nothing based on but table chart as we all know that we can calculate tables at 2 times 1 2 times 2 2 times 3 in a similar sense if 9n minus 11 is a multiple of 17 then n minus 11 plus 17 which gives n plus 6 is also going to be a multiple of 17 similarly n plus 6 Plus 17, which gives you n plus 23, is also going to be a multiple of 17. So in n plus 6 into n plus 23, these both are multiples of 17 times x into 17 times x plus 1. So they are always divisible by 17 into 17. But in all these tables. of odd numbers if one has to be a even multiple another has to be a odd it's like even odd even odd in that sense so 17's multiple will be 17 34 51 68 so one will be even one will be odd because these are consecutive multiples of 17 one has to be even multiple one has to be an odd multiple so there will be another factor of 2 as well we cannot suggest x is even or x plus 1 is even but we could definitely say one of this is even so every number will be at least divisible by 2 into 17 into 17 which is going to result as 578 is this okay with everyone achit if i ask you what is the another tell me the table of 12 then you can say like 12 into 1 as 12 12 into 2 as 24 12 into 3 as 36 or you could say So first will be 12, second will be 12 plus 12, 24. Third will be 24 plus 12, 36. In both ways, you get the multiples of 12. In similar sense, if n minus 11 is multiple of 17, the another multiple of 17 is going to come by adding 17 into this number, which I did 9 minus n minus 11 plus 17, which is going to give me answer is n plus 6, which is one of the factors in the given question, one of the multiples in given question. that means n plus 6 has to be a multiple of 17 in the similar sense if i add 17 to n plus 6 i again get n plus 23 so n plus 23 should also be a multiple of 17 so in short both n plus 6 and n plus 23 are multiples of 17 and they are consecutive multiples because i have added only 17 into it both the times so i could replace n plus 6 with 17 times x And n plus twenty three with seventeen times x plus one, right? Now, because it is a multiple of seventeen, both will be divisible by seventeen into seventeen all the time. But the last take is every odd number table has one multiple as even, then odd, and even and odd alternatively. So out of this x and x plus one, one number has to be even at the last end. so i would get one two also common so in totality i have two common 17 common 17 common and this would be in any type of n plus 6 and n plus 23 which are multiple of 17 so 17x into 17 times x plus 1 is always divisible by 578 is this okay now everyone great please remember this concept which could be a very useful to you we have this last question for the day please solve this well done team you are done with the question answer is zero definitely anyone who have not got this answer only thing need to be remember is a ki power n plus b ki power n 
is always divisible by a plus b if n is odd. If you know this concept, the remainder happens to be 0. Anyone needs to be explained? Any questions? Shashwat, Driti, Pratmesh, Ritima, Archit, Srishti. Thank you so much guys. Thank you for your patience listening and hope you must have got the things. Thank you so much.